Hey folks, this is Morgan with Avion Studios, and today we are going to be talking about the rubber grommet. Not the sexiest piece of the Fender Rhodes, but uh, important and typically the first thing to degrade and break down in an old Fender Rhodes. Uh, this is a great example. This is a 1980 Mark that we have in the studio. Great board. Everything is pretty much in really good condition. The hammer tips are good, the damper felts, the bridle straps. Those are all really good. The only thing that's bad on this board are the rubber grommets. Part of the reason for that is uh, the hammer tips are a neoprene, while as these are actually a true rubber product. So that is one of the reasons that they will degrade the quickest of everything on the board. So to illustrate the difference between an old bad grommet and a new grommet, what we did is switch out every other tone bar here with new grommets so that you guys could hear the difference and we can talk about some of the problems that come up with the old grommets. And here I have some of the old grommets. Uh, some of them are really mushroomed out and really squished out. Those typically come from the lower register because those are under a lot more pressure with thicker springs from underneath and heavier bars as well. So you can see that the ones that we left are still, I don't know how well you can see it, I'll try and put a picture up, are still squished out and uh, it can, it can uh, have some problems. And so I'm going to play some notes just to demonstrate uh, what can happen. Uh, that is an actual tonal example of what happens when these guys are bad. So here is a C sharp and a D sharp that we did switch out. And then here's the D. And I hope you can hear that. That D has a little kind of like a little tack a little thump, and those are all new ones. And then that G sharp, G sharp, G is a new grommet. G sharp is the old grommet, and you can really hear that tack, that kind of slap. And what that is, is as these become brittle, they stop seating properly, and some of that energy, that motion coming up with the hammer tip that strikes the time bar, some of that is instead of just being used to produce sound is actually jolts the tone bar in its seating and that's how you get that little that little click that little tap really pure tone nice tone and there's that clack so that's what you want to get rid of and that's uh, really a pretty mild example of when something goes wrong with these guys if they're really old and bad uh, you can get a really loud bonk or clap or a couple different nasty kind of raspy sounds. Uh, and then on the lower register, it'll often end up being really muddy will be the effect. Uh, even if it doesn't sound outright like a bonk, it'll, it'll distort in a way, even when it's supposed to be like a nice round tone, it won't. And you'll get kind of that dirty muddiness. And the idea with replacing these is you want to get back to that smooth round sound. And as you go up in dynamic force, as you're hitting it harder, you want to have that that raspiness and that kind of treble, you know, flare come in there, but you also want to have that nice smooth round tone and you lose that with overly brittle uh grommets. So uh, a couple notes about voicing, or actually, let me talk really quick. Uh, we uh, replaced a bunch of these. It's one of the first things we do on boards that come in at Avion Studios, and we did not like any of the choices. We didn't like the Fender Originals, and we didn't like the common replacements. So what we did is we made ourselves some new grommets. We worked with an American rubber manufacturer, and we made these guys, and there's a couple benefits that I'll just talk about really quickly. One, they are thicker. Uh, which is to say there's more material. They are especially thicker and wider on top, so you get more even pressure distribution. And that way, uh, they, they'll last longer. They won't distort uh, be just because there's more material. And they also sleeve better. So, for example, like with this tone bar, they sleeve into the hole better. And then they also sleeve in the screw uh, much tighter as well. And as an added note, some Fender Rhodes use, uh, older ones will use a fully threaded screw like these, and others will use a bugle style, which does not have thread going up to here. 
And so these guys will fit tightly with both of those. And they do take a little more work uh, to get on and off, but it is worth it in terms of isolation and longevity of the piece. The whole, it, well worth it, at least in our experience so far. Uh, this is an example of one of the common replacements. You can see how much it, easily it slides up and down uh, these screws. And that was one of the things that we wanted to avoid. Also, it has a, a rounded top, which is going to squish out much more readily. So just a couple things that we think made uh, ours a big improvement, even though it's a, a small and, and sometimes a, a looked over part. We think it's an important piece, and it really does affect your tone and your voicing uh, quite a bit. Uh, another last little benefit is it also holds the uh, springs a little better. Uh, because it does have a longer shaft and that means that as you're taking these off you'll notice there is a silicone dab that's dabbed on the springs to kind of keep the springs centered and this uh, keeps the springs centered a lot better than the older replacement ones do so we don't recommend uh, going back with silicone and, and tap you know kind of a, adhering uh, the springs when you're replacing so now I'm going to talk a little bit about what to uh, look for when you are replacing these because it means that you're kind of going to be revoicing your entire keyboard. So the springs have different thicknesses. The heaviest ones are here and then the lightest ones are down on your treble end. And really uh, what I recommend to people when you replace them all is keep the spring voicing the same way they were especially on the low end you'll see sometimes doubled up springs or an extra heavy spring and the reason is is these don't just balance the height of the tone bar but they also add resistance so for example if you're pushing up really hard on the bottom of these which a couple heavy springs will be doing it affects how that tine then reacts to a hammer strike and that is one of the more advanced details in voicing Another aspect that you're going to want to look at is when you replace all these, you're going to notice a few things that may have been wrong and had been covered up by your old rubber grommets. Things like uh, a bad tine is a, is a somewhat common thing to show up, which is uh, when it doesn't uh, seat properly any longer in the, in the larger butt of the tine here. That may come up. Uh, you can also notice things like a bad hammer tip where the groove is too deep and now you really notice that it hits the hits the tine and and doesn't really give it a clean hit so look out for that as well uh, also sometimes when you're going back into these and sometimes quality control in fender was not great so uh, sometimes these tines will just be set a little bit off at the factory it's a great opportunity if they're really off, especially in the lower registers where if it's a little bit off, it'll end up being a long way off by the time it reaches the magnet. A good opportunity to look down these holes right here and see if it's a little bit off uh, in here, then it means it's going to be pretty far off over here. So it may be a good opportunity to loosen those up and reset your tines to center them back up. Another thing with the height, which you're going to be adjusting with your uh, forward screw here, is that you want to let off the damper, as in depress the key, and then take a look at where your tine is actually sitting, because the damper will raise it up a little bit, and that might give you a false idea of where it's actually going to be vibrating. So, for example, this little note right here, the damper is actually pushing it up, so when I look at it and, uh, in, in a non-depressed way, it looks like it's too far above the magnet but then when I release the damper it sets right down and it will vibrate right in front of that magnet and then also for volume typically and sometimes to kind of play around and find the sweet spot you can slide these magnets up and down a couple other little notes about voicing around this area uh, there are some other options that people use sometimes stacking washers if you get a big wide ring washer you can go underneath and kind of around the grommet uh, for a little tighter, a little more resonant sound. You can also, on the treble end, some people have added felt instead of the grommets, which I don't really recommend, but I just wanted to mention it, as there's a couple other things that people use. Some people have even used cardboard punchings, and if you really just want that pure trill kind of driving sound, that may be an option for you if you're going to play through a distorted amp the whole time, all the time, and that's all you ever want to do with it. But in general, 
the idea with these rubber grommets is you want to replace uh, and go back to what's the original sound where you have that soft full tone dynamic that's smooth and then in increasing dynamic uh, response you know to a harder hit you get back into that more trebly raspy kind of flare out sound uh, I think that's about it that I really want to say about rubber grommets. Uh, I'm sorry that it's probably like 10 minutes long uh, for a silly little part, but I, I hope you see that they are important and they do affect the sound. And uh, let us know if you guys have any questions. We are Avion Studios. We are at avionstudios.com. We do not have a web store for these little guys right now. Uh, but we do sell them on eBay, so just look us up there. They're a pretty unique product. Nobody else has them. So check those out, and we sell a few other things. And uh, have fun with your Fender Rhodes. This is Morgan Chart, Avion Studios. Thank you.